This is John Holder, and you're watching Average Joe Sports Talk. Uh, this is John Holder with uh, Grace Radio 90.7 FM and also High School Football Alabama Scoreboard Show. Uh, I almost have you coach. John, it's a pleasure you know, bringing us you know, opportunity to come up here and do this interview. First of all, I want to thank you for that. Um, you've been a big influence of mine watching the work you've done over the years. It's been fantastic. And your voice and face is recognized everywhere, especially in North Alabama, but pretty much over the whole, whole entire state now. But before we get into that and how you got to this point in your career, I always like to start these things out with how you grew up, what that was like. Um, just give us a you know general description of your childhood and how you grew up. Well, my dad was a high school football coach, so I get it honest. Um, so that's really my background. Of course, when you're a high school football coach, it's, in this part of the country, it's almost like uh, the same as being a Baptist preacher. <laughs> you're moving a lot. You're either, you're either getting run out of town or you're stepping up to the next big thing. So I've moved a lot of times, moved 11 or 12 times in my lifetime, a lot of times moving from coaching job to coaching job. That's just the way the business is. I think it's probably a little worse now even than it was back in the 70s and 80s when all that was going on. But uh, basically lived, you know, I went to, you know, three or four different schools growing up from kindergarten all the way through senior in high school and so in in different parts of the state growing up so uh, that's you know basically uh, when I was my dad was the head football coach at Piedmont twice the first time around was when I was born and I was born on a Thursday in October so they actually were playing Cherokee County the next night and so uh, you know when I was born my dad's to the hospital but then he's I'm okay or whatever he's coming back Football practice, game the next night, didn't miss the game with awesome. center. So uh, I, I grew up, uh, I grew up honest, they have, there's a football that I still have. That the whole Piedmont football team that year uh, signed and they put that in my crib. So I, I really haven't had a chance uh, to do anything else except, you know, be involved in high school football. That's good. Cool. So obviously, you know, your dad being a coach, you grew up around the game. What's some of those early memories, man? Some of those things that kind of step out and, you know, when you think back on your childhood, it really just kind of uh, got that, that spark that lit the fire that we know John Holder is today. Well, I mean, you know, I think it's a uh, – I was very young, uh, obviously, when he was probably in the prime of his coaching career, just getting started. And he got out of it for about six years and uh, went into administration for three years, went into private business for three years, and then came back to Piedmont the second time as head coach in the late 70s. And so – you know, it was one of those things where I was very young. That's all I really remember was my dad being a football coach. And then it was about six years where he was out of it and then came back in. And about the time he came back in, I was about 12 years old. And at that point in time is when you're, I think that's a, a, age 12 is when you're real impressionable. And uh, so I was a very impressionable. He jumped really right back full blast into the coaching business. And, uh, you know, I knew that, uh, I wanted to be around high school football specifically, uh, doing something with that. Uh, I was not cut out to be a coach whatsoever. Uh, I just didn't have the – I just wasn't blessed with that. People have always asked me a lot of times about, well, John, why didn't you be a coach? Well, I'm not smart enough to be a coach. I don't know the X's and O's enough to be a coach. Uh, I don't have the mentality and temperament to be a coach. My dad had all those things. I didn't. Uh, but I knew I wanted to be around it in some other way. And so what he did give me was he did give me some some things that I could do as far as the broadcasting. I always liked broadcasting. When I was a kid growing up. I didn't really want to be a sportscaster. I wanted to be, you know, Casey Kasem, American oh, Top yeah. 40 was the big thing in the 70s. You know, and I wanted to be the proverbial DJ. You know, kids don't even know what that is now. <laughs> but I uh, wanted to be a DJ. And, of course, here at Grace Radio, I've kind of been able to kind of do that. And I started off in radio for a lot of years, WQSB, out, old Alabama 100 in Anniston, WGAD in Gadsden where I first started, WDNG worked a lot of years in radio doing sports, but I really wanted to be the, the DJ sitting there, you know, play all the records and all that kind of stuff. It was probably not until later on, probably what, late in the high school days, if not the college days, that I really kind of gravitated toward the sports part of it. So once you got 
you know, uh, well, where did you have to go to college? Jack State. Yeah, Jack communication State. Jack State, which at the time, you know, I, I'm not as well versed now with the communication department, but at the time in the mid 80s, the communication department at Jacksonville State was second to none anywhere in the country. I mean, better than Alabama, better than Georgia. Facilities were brand new. Television studio there was brand new, what TV24 used for a lot of years. They still have a campus radio station there now. And everything there was brand new at the time. It was outstanding. And the instructors at the time were top of the line, some of the top communication and broadcast instructors in the country. So I really feel like from a communication standpoint that uh, at the time that I was coming through Jacksonville State, I feel like it was one of the best communication degrees you could get anywhere in the South. And now, who were some of those guys that you really looked up to back then? Maybe it's someone that was on the radio. I know you mentioned Casey Casey for one. Uh, maybe, maybe it's someone who you learned from under or or somebody you worked with in the early years that really stuck out to you. Well, you know, when I was a kid growing up, uh, the original Pigskin Roundup way back when in the 70s was on the old Alabama 100 in Anniston. And there's a guy who's still here, Rob Street. Of course, he's the son of the legendary Malcolm Street, who's in the Calvin County Sports Hall of Fame, who was the innovator of everything uh, sports-wise. And Rob did the original Pigskin Roundup on the radio. So I'm, I'm a kid growing up. Even living 100 miles down to the south, they had a 100,000-watt signal. And on Friday nights, I could pick them up. And so I grew up listening to Rob Street. But once I got into the business, there are a number of people that, uh, that I uh, wouldn't be here doing anything without one of those guys is Mike Hathcock. Mike uh, was at WGAD in Gadsden doing play-by-play. Mike uh, is still, he's a last radio. Back in the broadcast booth this year is the color guy on their game of the week up there in center. And Mike is one of the most talented people I know. He worked in the communication department for many, many years at Jackson State. He's an engineer. He built this radio station. He built Grace Radio, physically built it. Installed everything you see here, Mike Hathcock installed. He built this station. And he gave me the first chance to be on the air at WGAD back in the day in the early 90s in Gadsden. Uh, they had a game of the week, and they had a coach's show with every high school head coach in Etowah County. Um, and so he gave me a chance. I started off as a sideline reporter and didn't get paid anything. I think I got a Shoney's breakfast bar every Friday night <laughs> at the Shoney's there in East Gadsden, That's Omegan. Right. And uh, I think I got a WGAD jacket with my name on it. That was huge. And then the next year, they needed somebody to do their scoreboard show, and they needed a uh, they needed somebody to do their coaches' shows every week. And so Mike went to bat for me, went to the station management owners, and said, "Hey, uh, I know he's never done this before, but I, but from the year that I'd spent doing sidelines with him, he said, you know, John can do the job. Just give him a shot. So if he hadn't done that, y'all you know, don't know where I would be. And then, uh, you know." Later on, Mickey Shadricks, who I worked with for a long time at TV24, uh, really started with him at WHMA at Alabama 100. At that time, that was one of the top radio stations in America. Unbelievable ratings. And they were doing a high school game of the week. And I was doing, I was on WDNG in Anniston for one season doing a, uh, a little, actually, pigskin roundup uh, radio show. And that you couldn't hear anywhere else. AM station couldn't hear it outside of city limits of Aniston, really. But Mickey heard me, and in the off season the next year, wanted they said, "Hey, we want to start a scoreboard show, and we think you know you're the guy for it." So I went from a sta- from not being able to be heard outside the city limits of Aniston to Alabama 100 with that 100,000 watt signal. We people were calling us from Greenville and Tuscaloosa and Tennessee and Georgia, and uh, we were huge there. And then it went on. And then, of course, you know, I, uh, you know, Mickey was huge. Gave me a huge opportunity. Gave me the opportunity with TV Twenty Four. There's a little break there where I went to WQSB. Those folks are great, phenomenal folks as well. And uh, then uh, he was involved with TV Twenty Four as the manager of TV Twenty Four, and gave me opportunities there to not only do, you know, pigskin roundup, but also doing the magazines and weather on the news and things like that, which I always wanted to do. So Mickey was big. And then of course, Aaron Acker. Aaron is not a broadcast person, but Aaron is the owner of, uh, of Grace Radio. He's been the president of our 501c3 here at Grace Radio. And Aaron, uh, from the get-go, when we start before they owned anything, Aaron wanted me to come and start the station and run the station 
been here for 22 years. And so those are three guys that really, as far as giving me an opportunity, uh, you know, I think about Mike Hathcock, Mickey Shadricks, and, uh, and Aaron Acker. As far as people that would be famous through the years, you know, I mentioned Casey Kasem. You grew up in the 70s and you had any interest in football whatsoever. Keith Jackson oh, yeah. was a huge influence. Uh, I think, and then, you know, later years, I got right out of college, was about the time that Russell Limbaugh came along, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if there's ever been a better broadcaster as far as a talk host than Rush Limbaugh was, regardless of how you feel politically. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, I won't throw a name out there that most folks won't know. You have to be old and you have to like wrestling. But uh, there was a guy in the 70s and 80s that I've, I was a big wrestling fan, still am, yeah. And uh, there was a guy named Gordon Soley. Gordon Soley, yes. And Gordon Soley was the guy on Saturday afternoons when you got three channels on your TV <laughs> and you watched uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling out of Atlanta. That was Gordon Soley. Later came to Birmingham with Continental. And I just thought the way his vocabulary yeah. and his delivery and the realism that he brought to, to that was uh, was huge. So those are some of the, I guess, famous guys. Yeah, that raspy voice. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was very, I remember yeah. him just like it was yesterday. Um, in this business, man, what have you seen the major changes from when you first started to now? I know a lot of things going in the social media direction. There's still a need for, obviously, radio. There's still a need for, but, it, but it's changed. What are some of the biggest changes you've seen uh, over the years? Well, well, Bo, you hit it right on the head is the technology. You know, it was, uh, it, it, you know, the technology and this, when I first started out at WGAD in Gadsden in 91, uh, and I was doing a coaching show with every coach in Etowah County. That's crazy. Okay. So first thing you had, you didn't have all this right here. You had what was a cart machine. Mm. So a physical cart that had five minutes on there. And so you had to put, so that interview had to be five minutes. Couldn't be over because you didn't have any more room. Uh, and you couldn't edit it. And so it was live. We we're doing all these by phone. And in 1991, nobody has a cell phone. So you're trying, eat every week, you're trying to track down 10 high school head coaches. And they don't have cell phones. And they don't have email. And they don't have text. Uh, they have a landline phone maybe at their house or a landline phone maybe at the field house. And if you couldn't get them on that, and, and then I'm in a situation where I've got a full-time job and I'm coming in after hours and doing this. Oh, to, and you had to physically be at the station. I mean, there was no way you could carry the equipment out and catch the, 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 the guy in person. You just didn't have, there was just not that kind of equipment. So that, that was, you know, calling, that was calling Vince DeLorenzo <laughs> at home at eight or nine o'clock at night oh, or calling Brian Mintz at his house at 10 o'clock at night. Or, uh, or, or Lyman Townsend or Raymond Farmer or any of those guys. Uh, so you had to really develop a great relationship with those folks. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very, being a coach's son, I was very cognizant of their time. Mm -hmm. And I know I hate to call you, I mean, I hated to dial those numbers a lot of times. It's 8 o'clock at night. They maybe had a bad week of practice. Maybe they got beat the week before. Mm -hmm. and, you're calling up and they want to get home and they're tired and a long day and they haven't seen their family. And then here's this young guy calling from down at the radio station to do an interview. And it's, uh, and you know, that went on for a long time. I mean, that, the, the technology didn't really start changing until probably the late nineties, you know, where you had more cell phones and things like that. So it will be a lot easier to do something like that uh, today than it was in those days. And then just overall, you know, the way that, the social media has come into play, as you mentioned, just the instant part of it. Uh, everything's instant now. That's That's been a, you know, there's good things to the technology and the social media. There's some drawbacks to it. You know that as long as I do. Yeah. What's some of the core values, though, you learned uh, through, through those hard times that has kind of helped you nowadays when you see these changes coming? Well, I think the big thing is I have always, uh, this has been from day one. And I think one of the great things, I keep going back to this, one of the great things that's helped me in doing high school football is, been, ha, is having been a coach's son. Because I have a perspective on it that most media guys don't get. Sometimes there's some media guys out there that are, that are doing high school football and they're trying to be Paul Feinbaum and they mm -hmm. try to go negative. And I'm like, 
these guys don't make enough money. These guys work hours and things like this. This is high school. These are 15, 16, 17 year old kids. And so my thing has been from the get go, we're going to be positive. We're going to be totally positive. We want to, we want to expose, we want to be positive with the officials, positive with the schools, the administration, the coaches, the athletes, everybody involved. We want to be positive. It's one thing I like about average Joe is you guys are positive and you bring out the positive and, you know, uh, there's no there's there's no need to ever be negative. There's a lot of negative stories out there that I won't touch with a ten foot pole. Uh, I could, and probably you know get ratings or whatever it is in this day and time, views, clicks, that kind of stuff. But uh, that's not who I am. Uh, I always think about what if that guy was my dad, and that guy's got a wife, and that guy's got a family at home, and my big thing is. I don't want, I know how it is. I don't want that guy's wife or that guy's family or that guy himself. He's just lost a big game on Friday night. And then to come home and then here's some jack leg like me <laughs> that is negative and talk about how terrible they are and all that kind of stuff. My thing has always been if a team beats another team 56 to nothing, let's talk about how good that team is that won 56 to nothing. And just the team that got beat 56 to nothing, let's just leave them be. Yeah. Not much you can say there. Let's focus on how good somebody is instead of how bad somebody is. You know, we may say, oh, they're just having a tough season. Uh, and that's it. And go along. Um, and, and also, I think I've told every coach, because when you've been doing this as long as I have for 31 years, I've gone through a lot of coaches, hundreds of coaches. And a lot of times those coaches, when they come here new to the area, they don't know me and I don't know them. And so that, that trust thing, one of the things I always tell, I said, Coach, I know you don't know me. And I know you may have had uh, what your experience has been with the media in the past. But I'm going to tell you, I will never say anything negative about you or your football team. Uh, and if I do by some chance, because nobody's perfect, but if I do say something dumb, because I'm dumb and I can do some dumb things sometimes, if I do, you please call me and let me know. Because it was not intentional and I want to make it right if I've had something. I said, I want to be a promoter of high school football. I'm a coach's guy first, even before officials and players. I'm a coach's guy first. And I said, my thing is to be positive and be totally positive. And I, if, if I'm not, I want, I want you to let me know. Here's my number. If, you, if I say anything that you think is not right, not fair, uh, then you let me know because I will make it right. That's awesome. I love that. Over the years, who are some of the coaches that really sticks out to you that you just thought, man, this guy's unbelievable? Well, you know, I, I tell you what, Bo, we have had, and you, and you know this, uh, I really can say, I can say this with 100% honesty. In the 31 years that I have been doing this in this area, there has not been one high school head football coach that I have ever had a problem with. Really? I've loved every one of those guys. I had a great relationship I hope they feel the same way about me. Yeah, uh, I don't know of anybody right off the bat that I've ever had a problem with uh, that I can think of. But And I certainly can tell you that every one of these guys have been phenomenal. We are blessed yeah. because we have a lot of just, not just great, we got great football coaches around here. We got great men around here. Yeah. And whether they're coaching state championship teams or teams that you know don't win a game, uh, you know, we've got really phenomenal, good men here. There's not any coach through 31 years that I have dreaded calling that I was like, oh, gosh, here comes Coach so-and-so. I can't stand to be around. I mean, there's never been – I've never had that reaction. And uh, there's been so many great guys down through the years. Uh, I've also been blessed since the beginning to be – uh, on the board and the vice president of the Cowan County Sports Hall of Fame, and also do a lot of work with the Cherokee County Sports Hall of Fame, and was also involved with the, uh, for six years, I was on the selection committee for the Alabama High School Athletic Association Hall of Fame. So I, I got to know a lot of these legendary coaches. And I, I like these younger coaches that are coming along. I'm to the point now where I'm older than most of the coaches. When I first started out, every coach was way older than me, and I was intimidated. And then I now I've got to the point now where I'm just about older than all the, all the rest of it. But there's guys like that I just – Rusty Jakeway at Sand Rock, uh, he and I would talk in the summer times. He'd be on the road somewhere, and we would talk for two or three hours. He goes down the interstate. 
guys like, uh, you know, I, I have a, had a great relationship with him, these legendary guys, the late Larry Ginn. Uh, it's great, you know, a lot of folks didn't know how to take Coach Ginn, but I was able to, over the course of two or three years, to earn the, the trust with Coach Ginn, and uh, we had a phenomenal relationship. Uh, and then, you know, you had guys, uh, I'm going back and just thinking about what the legendary guys like, uh, guys like um, Robert Herring at Oxford, and who won three state championships down there. Mm -hmm. uh, another guy, sadly, that we've lost and we've passed away, guys like Bobby Joe Johnson, and some of the current guys out there, like uh, Coach Rob at Hoax Bluff, mm -hmm. uh, Mike Robertson just loved Coach Rob to death. All these guys now are younger than me, but uh, a guy like a, you know, a guy like a Todd Ginn, or uh, you know, Quint Smith, or Jonathan Miller, or some of those guys that are actually, you know, they're they're younger than I am, but have a great relationship with them. Then guys are close to my age. I kind of went to school with, you know, guys like Steve Smith at Piedmont and Alan Beckett, who's up at Cedar Bluff now. Jeff Smith at Walter Welburn that I've had, and I hate to mention names, God, leave people out, and I like all these guys. I, I really do love all of them. And then, you know, one of the great memories I have pigskin roundup when we were on campus at Jackson State when TV24 was there one Friday night and it wasn't planned this way I guess it was planned that this way the week of but I looked over there we're doing the show and our guest live at JSU at Self Hall that night and I looked over there and they were sitting over there they both had games came after their games were very gracious to come live in person and to Jacksonville looked over there on the couch in the studio and there's Larry again and Danny Horn. Wow. And they were over there. I, went, I, I was I was on the air. They were waiting to be on. Uh, I would love to be in that conversation. Oh, man. You because, be. you know, how much do you get any better than Larry man. Ginn and Danny Horn? And we had them on the show the same night. And I just looked over there, and they were sitting there on the couch talking. And I was like, man, man. this is one of those things you'll never forget. Oh, yeah. Something, yeah, nights like that is yeah. special. But, yeah. man, over the years, you've. You've talked to them all, though. I mean, that, that's pretty special. But to have them there at the same time, that had to oh, be. Oh, it was. Um, what about players? Who's, I mean, you've seen thousands of players that are fantastic. But some of the guys that you watch, and I know you and I talked off off the air one day, and you talked about Freddie Wagan was one that really stuck out to you. Who are some of the other ones over the years that you just like this guy? Yeah, I mean, boy, that's a tough question. Because I go back, you know, I go back to I can remember guys uh, in high school. I can remember guys all the way back in the 70s that right. played. And, uh and then you got guys now, you know, sometimes, you know, when you get to be my age, you kind of like, you get talking about these older guys, right. but hey, we've got some young guys now. I'm telling you like, 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 uh, Taylor Hayes, the boy at Piedmont a couple of years ago. Uh, that guy, I think is probably one of the top two or three quarterbacks that ever played in Calvin County in almost a hundred years of football. Right. So it's not just the young guy, the, not just the older guys, but you're right. The, I, I think, I still think to this day, the best high school football player I've ever seen was Freddie Wade. That's wild. That I was yes. uh, and now, now Freddie, if, if he ever watches this, I, I don't think he was a great – he played some baseball for him, Sans Smith center field or whatever. He wasn't a great baseball player. But football player, wow. <laughs> that guy was uh, incredible. Of course, yeah. you know, we got a guy like a Matt Campbell at Alexandria yeah. who was awesome. A guy that uh, – Larry Rose, I wish people that – People know Larry Rose as an offensive lineman, mm -hmm. but he played defensive line at Emma Sanson. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, I wish people could have seen the guy play defense. He, he probably could have been a defensive lineman at Alabama, but they had a, a tremendous need when he came down his freshman year for an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a defensive lineman just passed away a couple of years ago who was an All-American at Jack State and played in the NFL from Randolph County in Weedowie named Alvin Wright. And Alvin was a terror. Telling you, he's probably the best defensive lineman that I've ever seen. Uh, I think in high school, you know, Carnell Williams, obviously I think that's still probably the best running back mm -hmm. I've seen to this day anywhere. And then I think, you know, as far as a quarterback goes, um, you know, you know, I know he, he bombed out in the NFL, but in high school, Jamarcus Russell from Williamson Mobile, about as good a high school quarterback I think as I've seen in this state was, uh, was Jamarcus Russell. He, he, yeah, he was. Unbelievable. I remember he played as a freshman against. I grew up with Carnell with that one. They played against uh, Carnell when, when that one won the state that year. I was uh, doing that game on the state radio network. He was uh, ninth grade that year. He's right? ninth grade, and he comes <laughs> out with in the state championship game with five wides, no backs in the backfield, 
shotgun ninth grader, and he's he's going through two or three reads. <laughs> oh man, against the unbelievable yeah. defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that game. It was an unbelievable game. Um, now, John, catch up today with what you've kind of launched uh, a new network once you leave, once you left the TV twenty four. What you have going on? Yeah, we started last year on radio on uh, amazingly kind of coming full circle back to WHMA. That's awesome. Uh, the Big 95 is what it's called now, WHMA in Anniston. They carry Alexandria football on Friday nights. And so last year we came in after Alexandria football and also uh, 97.5 in Gadsden, carries Gadsden City Titan football, and we come in after that as well. Uh, this year we made a transition going back to, as you guys know, and this is, this is where it's going, is live stream. And so we uh, we added in, we're still on 97.5 and still on 95.3 WHMA, but we are also are uh, live streaming our show, social media, uh, you know, website, Facebook, YouTube, all those kind of things, high school football, Alabama. So that's been the big thing in the off season that we worked on was trying to add that video element to it because we had a lot of requests because, you know, for 16, 17 years, people were used to, even though I'm, I'm a radio guy, uh, I really don't, I had no aspirations of ever being on television. I really don't know how that happened, but, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, the, uh, but people around here after 16 or 17 years of yeah. Friday nights on the, the radio, I mean, television, not a lot of folks remember the radio days. Right. So, um, we had a lot of requests in off season. Well, we, you know, for, to bring the video element in with the graphics right. and, you know, things like that. So we've been able to, to uh, to add that element in, so uh, that's been very good. Talk about your team that helps make all that happen. Well, we have uh, we we partnered with uh, Parker Memorial Baptist Church in Midtown Anniston, there on Quintard. They have pretty much a full television studio that they use for a lot of their church services that they broadcast, and a lot of devotional things that they do, and things that they do in their family life center. And so, they basically everything we need and needed. For graphic standpoint and and uh, cameras and sets and all that they had that capability so we've been able to partner with them it's been very good and then we simulcast still on the big 95 Tex Carter over there has been really great for us for two years at the big 95 to work with us on that and um, then you know the folks at Park Memorial then got a great crew of people that uh, that work with us uh, Amado Ortiz has been my right hand guy for a dozen years. He's the guy that gets our scores, enters the scores, enters all that information, region rundown, updated live that night, all the region standings. I mean, so we have that before we even go off the air. So motto has been with us for a long time there. And then we've got, uh, uh, we've got Bailey Morris works with us. Bailey is Swain Morris. He used to be the head coach at Gaston. He's now the defensive coordinator, at Pierce County, Georgia. And uh, we don't have her every week because she has to go down and see coach Morris Watch the team play like she did a couple of weeks ago. But uh, Bailey is a, a young lady who has uh, been, uh, she shoots, actually, she's got, shoots her highlights. She's the lady that shoots her highlights and does editing and things like that. And then we've got Jordan Smith, uh, Nathan Gober. Uh, those guys are kind of the guts behind the scenes and things like that that uh, handle things as far as directing and all the technical stuff that goes on there as well. Ashley Gober. Uh, involved with that as well, and then we've got uh, uh, and I and this thing wouldn't happen at all without Katie Edwards. Katie Edwards is our social media coordinator and our salesperson, and there would be no high school football about at all without Katie Edwards. Katie's um, husband is the offensive coordinator at Jacksonville High School, Jamison Edwards. So she gets it. She knows football. She's a coach's wife, so she knows some of the things we talked about earlier. Uh, so she has that positivity about high school football and coaches and things like that. So we got a really great team of folks that uh, we put together there. And then right-hand guy, guy that you've met before that is kind of a volunteer with us is a guy named Don Wilson. And Don, for years, just we just – a lot of times when there's not a show, we just go watch high school football games. So Don uh, works for the Postal Service in Anniston, and uh, he's uh, been with us for a lot of years. We just go out and – Catch games. If you see me on Friday nights at the game, you're going to see Don. You see him doing some games with us, Absolutely. and uh, he helps me do a lot of things uh, behind the scenes on, on Friday nights. I know your number one teammate above all else is the man upstairs, and talk about what he's been like for you in your life. 
Well, absolutely. I mean, you know, my, you know, all this stuff is my wife reminds me all this football stuff and sports stuff that I do is, you know, I don't have to do that. That's stuff I choose to do. Uh, and that's a blessing, but, uh, my, my real main career, my, my daytime job, so to speak, is here at Grace Radio 90.7 FM, or a non-commercial, non-profit Christian radio ministry here in the Aniston Gadsden area. We cover Cherokee, Etowah, Calhoun, St. Clair counties. That's kind of our coverage area. And uh, we're 24 hours a day, seven days a week with, uh, we think, some of the best Bible teachers that you'll see anywhere in the country. So it's a ministry because we're a non-commercial. We don't sell advertising. You don't hear advertisements on Grace Radio. Uh, so we're we're a non-commercial. We're not allowed to do that. We're a non-profit, 501c3, so we're just like a church or any other organization. But we depend a lot on uh, listener support for that. But uh, but God has been so good. I could sit here and double the time we spent Absolutely. already <laughs> talking about the doors that he has opened up uh, for me That's right. through the years. And I give, I've given a lot of credit to a lot of men and ladies uh, in these last few moments we've been spending with you. but uh, And rightfully so, they deserve a lot of credit. But uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ right. is where it all is. And um, this is, uh, I, I, I can't even tell you, Bo, how uh, it is really, when I look back one day at all of this, um, it is an amazing testimony of God's goodness and uh, how good he has been to me. I mean, you know, you take a, a guy from Spring Garden, <laughs> a guy from, you know, I, I love Spring Garden Absolutely. and uh, proud to be from Spring Garden. But you don't, that's not usually the career path <laughs> from people from Spring Garden or anywhere small town in Alabama <laughs> to get into this business. And there have been some times where I have been like the host of, Super 7, I'm sitting there at Legion Field. And I'm sitting there on the curb turf, and there's 32,000 people at the state 6A state championship game and statewide television, and I'm the host of the Alabama-Mississippi All-Star game, and I'm welcoming people into Lad People Stadium in Mobile, and we're in 10 million homes all across the South on, on uh, CSS. And I'm like, I'm from Spring Garden. What am I doing here doing this? And then, you know, the AHSA television network with WOTM and, you know, doing the, uh, they never had been done before, reclassification re reveal show when they had the reclassification right. two years ago. We had a that. special down at the AHSA office and I'm the host of that. And I'm like, that's huge. <laughs> you know, to, it may not be big to other folks, but it was big to me. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, for a guy from out in Spring Garden who, our graduating class had 37 people in it, and that was the largest class that had ever been through the school. We don't even have but about one store, no stoplights. You know, literally there are cow pastures across the street from the school. And, you know, to come from that to doing some of the stuff that the Lord has blessed me to do, that kind of stuff, Bo, just cannot happen without the Lord uh, opening those doors and making that happen. There's nothing I... I'm, I'm not smart enough or talented enough to, for, for things like that to happen. It's all through him. That's amazing. That's a testimony all in itself, yeah. man. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, man, it's been fantastic getting to catch up with you. And I know a lot of people probably around the state obviously don't want to see this, man, to see where you came from because they know the face and the voice. Now it's time to put the message with it, where, 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 how this all came about. So I, I truly appreciate you coming on with us. Yeah, I appreciate it. I would just say to young people that are out there, when I speak to youth, youth groups, one of the things I do is that there's, there's something that you can do that nobody else can do, or very few people can do as well as you can do it. It, it may be a very small thing. Mm -hmm. And so find out what that one thing is, and then put it in the Lord's hands, and he'll bless you with it. And it does not matter. I'm a big advocate. I'm a really small school guy. Uh, people know that who know me. And I think, you know, I've always said to me, there's no difference in Gadsden City and Oxford and Jacksonville Christian and Galesville. Yeah. Those kids work just as hard. They're out there in the same heat That's practicing. Right. They're as worthy of the recognition. And don't let, if you're young people watching you out, watching this out there, do not let anyone tell you that because you're from some certain place that you can't succeed in doing what you sure. want. You don't have to be from Hoover. You don't have to be from from St. Paul's. You don't have to be from 
Bob Jones or a big school like that. That's great. You can be from that. I'm not putting those schools down. But don't let anybody tell you that you have to be from one of those schools to be a success in life. You can be from Spring Garden <laughs> and, uh, and do anything you want to do. That's right. John, I appreciate you so much and look forward to working with you in the future sometime. And, and definitely, uh, you're welcome on the Howard Channel anytime. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you.